Hello and welcome back to another episode of Octo Reacts. Uh, no, we're not Octo Reacts. We're actually uh, Minion J for the Disgruntled Octopus today. Uh, I apologize profusely. I'm very sick of being hit by a bus, not literally, just figuratively. And sick as a dog. Just really got a head cold. My youngest gave me a head cold, and I'm feeling fantastic if you can't already see. So, the purpose of today's video is to actually talk a little bit about um, reselling. I was hoping to do a video on uh, Chris. Helo's World Rec Railroad Reseller, basically, uh, he did do a video about eBay, people leaving eBay. Um, it's not us, it's you, eBay, and all these different things. Chris is um, a really good guy. Um, I speak to him quite often. I speak to him probably a couple of days a week. Um, he reaches out, um, and we, we converse quite you know, quite regular, I suppose. <laughs> if I dribble, I apologize. Uh, I haven't had any pain, uh, sorry, pain meds, uh, cold and flu tablets. So I'm hoping to get those soon and I've become a bit more <laughs> conversive. So what I want to talk about today is actually talked on Friday night regarding Flipwise. Uh, basically, I use it for my store. Um, I don't, I'm not affiliated with Flipwise and I've said to numerous people that have asked me about Flipwise and how would I recommend it? I don't recommend anything. Um, so please do your own research. You're a business owner. You need to do your own research. Um, I told people what I did it for my business. It led into some people doing some um, behind the scenes looking uh, for their needs. And they came back saying it was too it was too expensive at being having a store at yeah, with 2,000 listings, it was $50 a month or, you know, about $75 Australian a month. Uh, I've said numerous times, my store was under 1,000. Idealistically, I'd like to get it to 500. Um, in Grumpy Granny's Discord, I uh, basically, you know, questioned them why this store was 2,000. Uh, personally, that I think, um, you know, <laughs> from my perspective, yeah, like I said, that it was a genuine question. Uh, it's not to come across as arrogant. I, I honestly think uh, part-time sellers uh, shouldn't be listing that high. Um, someone came back in one of the comments saying, hey, look, you know, um, looking at, you know, sellers such as Back From Burner or the Hub, which is Tom, which is Mel's other half, uh, they've got stores with multiple thousands, you know, up to 100,000, 150,000. Should they be, you know, all those different things? You're not them. You're not back from burnout. You're not from the hub. You're not. Uh, you're not anyone in that in that league, right? So realistically, please don't take it personally. Um, you really need to know the basics of reselling. You need to know the basics of business. If you're going onto YouTube and having someone review your store and basically telling you what you're doing wrong and how to generate sales, you're already one foot in the grave from my perspective. So what I want to do today is basically talk a little bit about how I perceive having a small store. And please, by all means, it's not arrogance. Probably part <laughs> part sickness and part being fed up with uh, people watching YouTube, ingesting YouTube comment, uh, content, and basically trying to replicate it. Um, and failing uh, miserably. I don't want anyone to fail. Uh, this is part of the reason why we do the podcast. This is part of the reason why I do these videos is to say, hey, look, reselling's not sunshine and roses I, I would love it to be and i'm more than happy to assist because i have been reselling for almost 20 years um, in different capacities and different reasons um, and i have been full-time for about two years um recently gone back to work full-time at the start of the year just by virtue of uh, i lost interest in reselling to tell you the truth i want to i was punching everything back into the business i wasn't really um seeing anything um that was improving my quality of life. I, I've said before, I was working 80 hours a week, um, probably less than minimum wage and all these different things. Um, so I'm a big, big, strong advocate for if you are selling part-time, which I recommend, um, is that having a smaller store, it's it's easy to manage. It's basically less liabilities in the sense of yeah, cash flow issues, storage issues, um, all these different things. So for a bit of a, a bit of a story time, right? So back in 2014, I created a, a a Lego eBay account and was selling primarily Lego, right? So I still have that store there. It's pretty much been all but abandoned. I, I put in, you know, poly bags and stuff in occasionally myself from that perspective. All my stock for the Lego store is sitting up in Newcastle in a storage shed, which is costing me $280 a month. So from my perspective, I've got, I think I've got 50 or 60 listings. So there's a lot of replenishable stocks from that perspective. So the poly bags cost me $7 a piece plus postage. So I normally work it out to be $7.25. I list them for about $15. Uh, so I take fees and postage. Uh, postage is about $4. Fees is about $2 or $3 with promoting listings. So you obviously can see your profit margin shrinking. I 
you know, and this is something you need to be very mindful of is that I pay, you know, what did I say, $280 a month for storage shed rent. I've only got about 500 story, 500 uh, poly bags up there that are currently up there because I'm in the process of moving that stock back down to Canberra where I am. So every month I've got those poly bags in that storage shed. They're costing me 50 cents in storage. Um, these are very long tail items. That I, I specialize in you know, seasonal Lego, so Halloween, Christmas, Easter, all those different things. So they're only, you know, they do sell throughout the year, but obviously they've got their predefined periods where they do sell. I'm losing money on those sales. And this is what I'm going back to with the different things. You need a really compact store that sells really quick. You know, and like I've said numerous times on this and the lives and all the different things I talk about, you need to get in, get the money and get out. So, you know, sell quick valued items, you know, if we we'll get some money, get out. I don't necessarily care if you're making $10 profit or $100 profit, $1,000 profit. Don't buy products like books, for example. Books always comes up in these different things. Um, don't buy them uh, trying to emulate your favorite reseller, your favorite YouTuber, all these different things. Um, buying stacks of them. I know someone said that they're going to reevaluate if they're going to be reselling for the longer term when they list all their products and they list at the 2000 mark. You know, like realistically, this is this is things that you should be actively thinking about as you go, right? So me, for example, Lego, um, I'm looking at either putting that on ice or, or shrinking it right down and making that store a specialty store because it's got a lot of, you know, a lot of customers and a lot of all those different things. It's themed as well. So I can go from that perspective. However, the competitors in that space, it's no longer viable for me to conduct business um, on the on the on the structure I'm doing it from now. Like especially with the paying the overheads of the storage and all these different things. So that's something capacity. Um, obviously, storing books and books and books and books and books. That's something you don't want to be doing either. So you really need to look at it from a storage perspective. Um, a smaller store is easier to manage. I think I've already covered that. What I want to look at, and what I've mentioned on Friday Night the Live, is that we do a Friday Night Live. Um, it's basically live as long as I'm live. If once it goes offline, I disable the video so no one can watch it. So if you want to watch me <laughs> make a fool of myself for an hour on a Friday night, be there. But what I've been talking about the last Friday night is building a brand and moving outside that reselling space, right? So reselling is not going to be there indefinitely. Um, it will be there in some capacity, but as we currently know it in this current iteration where you go to the thrift store, you go to the op shop, you go to garage sales and all those different things, they'll probably cease to exist in the next five years, right? So Goodwill, you know, I did videos on it previously where they're basically, you know, trying to cut you out of the market. And part of the reason, yes, is resellers selling on YouTube and, you know, talking about it on YouTube. Um, so I do, I do acknowledge that. So I see a lot of comments, especially in Chris's video and my Goodwill video that I did a couple of weeks in the reaction video, um, basically saying YouTube resellers are destroying the markets. Yes, yes, they are. Yeah, I, I agree hundred percent. Yeah, you've heard it here first. Uh, a lot of people will argue the otherwise, but like I said on Friday night is I think reselling will finish here. YouTube resellers are here and we're just basically expediting it because we're pushing the information out instead of goodwill having to to learn it themselves and yeah slowly trudge along and you're having that time that period of time to get in learn how to resell get your money get out um with resellers you know shooting their mouth off about bolos and all these different things and what things sell for and these different things that time is obviously being pushed together very quickly and plus with technology as well so you're very mindful of that so build a brand uh build a social media presence realistically don't don't string yourself down to one reselling platform i know a lot of people talk about ebay a lot of people are quitting ebay a lot of ebay sellers are you know fed up with ebay platforms and all these different things they they hold the strings ebay like you know we were talking about it a couple of days ago regarding a lot of these seller platforms are talking about for buyers having um doing a lot of improvements for buyers. Yeah, the buyers, we find this easier for the buyers. We're finding this easier for the buyers. Uh, customers are doing this. It's never for the buyer. It's never for the customer. It's all these different things. Is because they're doing it for their own bottom line. They're actually doing it to generate money for themselves. So at any point when they're talking about promoted listings, they're talking about um, increasing buyer confidence or they're increasing all these different things. The purpose they're doing that for is purely for their bottom line it's they do not care about the seller they do not care about the buyer um you know i don't care you could pretty much fight me <laughs> you could probably take me down easy at the moment uh, but please 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 just be very mindful of that if you build your image you build your marketing you build your social media there is no reason why you can't slowly move across to other platforms like shopify um you know other platforms uh, other reselling online platforms that you actually have control of right 
So what I mentioned on Friday night was that if I was to create, you know, Octo Skylander Heaven.com, whatever it is from that perspective, and sell Skylanders. When I sell Skylanders on eBay, I could basically print out a business card and say, hey, look, you know, thank you for your purchase. If you go to www.octoskylands or whatever you call it, uh, .com, put this code in, you get 20% off. That customer will gravitate to that because they've obviously had a fantastic experience buying it through eBay. They'll move to my platform. And as long as I can keep getting that product in, they will start buying it from that platform and they will go from that perspective. So there is no reason, and I know it's against eBay's terms and conditions before you start writing that in the comment section below. However, the amount of stores I've bought things off from eBay, um, big box stores, you know, like I suppose decent medium-sized business stores, they are putting advertising material in their packages, redirecting you to their website. So that is something you need to be very mindful of. Um, build a social media. We've discussed that. I've got like a list of little list of dot points that I want to talk about before I die because <laughs> I'm literally falling over. Uh, don't rely on traditional sourcing methods. I think I talked about this a little bit before, like thrift stores, garage sales, yard sales, estate sales, and all these different things because eventually someone is going to move into those spaces and take the majority. So I've said before, and I'll say it again, go on Facebook Marketplace, use that as a sourcing platform. And I know a lot of the people that watch these you know, try and sell things on Facebook Marketplace. Graham, you're, you're a bit popular, mate. You get mentioned in my videos and uh, Chris's videos. Now you got international. Um, I was saying that people are becoming more and more savvy. He says greedy on Facebook Marketplace. So they are knowing what the value of their items are. Is that the thing of the matter is, is that they're not going to sell because primarily we look at it from a sourcing platform. So just be mindful of the fact is that start sourcing your products through different means either through you know arbitrage or basically all these different things start thinking outside the box i'm not gonna go into it because you really need to start thinking about these things by yourself your your business you're smart enough to enter into a business please start using your brain <laughs> it's probably the easiest way uh and don't rely on youtubers so don't listen to to people like myself or don't listen to people that you know talk about how fantastic they are and how they're always right and all these different things and bolos and all these different things because everyone's got a shelf life right so you know i've said a couple of weeks ago where videos from youtube were being recommended to me and i was watching videos and they were talking about a certain product which was funko in this perspective they were talking about the prices and the prices for funko have absolutely crashed um they'll they'll basically and then i realized this video was two years out of date well two years since it came out so this is something you need to be very mindful of is the fact is that yeah there's no reason why you can't take the good points away from your reach resellers on youtube um find out the reason why they're doing it for like yeah obviously if it's to feed their ego or they like for me for example i i, I like talking to people like and i've said numerous times before uh, i'd purely do it for an intrinsic um reason so i actually <laughs> quite enjoy it opposed to actually yeah getting it from a financial sense so get in get your product get out um look at it from that perspective don't hold massive amounts of stocks unnecessarily always revisit your business probably on a weekly or a fortnightly basis to see if it's working for you don't list don't wait to list two thousand items and go hey i'll revisit my reselling business from that perspective start researching start consuming content start looking at different methods start educating yourself um yeah you are running a business don't wait don't rely on other people to you know influence you or to basically tell you how to do things by all means have mentors right like you know basically one of the questions i got asked um uh, numerous times is you know what was my um my thing against a, a certain reseller so you know sells a, a 34.99 you know mentoring or a coaching course and something like this is that no issue with that however that people need to realize they need to outgrow that you know like it's the same message every time i'll say you 34.99 List stuff that sells, sell stuff, ship it off, rinse and repeat. There you go. That's that's your thirty nine dollar, yeah, your thirty five dollar package, right? You know that I, I've outgrown that package. You know, some YouTubers they basically dedicate whole whole videos just talking about admiration for this particular person, but they in themselves are doing themselves a disservice um, in the sense that they need to outgrow that that person. They need to outgrow that model in the sense that then they start need to start thinking for themselves because. As the economy gets tighter and as, as obviously, you know, Goodwill and thrift stores and all these different things become more self-sufficient in the sense that they make their own platforms, which we are seeing now with Goodwill Online, we're seeing Salvation Army on eBay and all these different things. Um, it's going to be more and more complicated to do, you know, 
build relationships with thrift stores and all these different things. Because personally, I think that thrift stores are probably going to exist in the sense that they're going to be like a dollar general or a two dollar shop. So you basically go in there, get the junk that's not viable for them to sell online. They basically move it on to you know poor people or lower socioeconomic areas. And 99.9% .9 of their business model will be online. So they'll be selling their high-end stuff that which we previously would pick up and resell and, you know, obviously take the, the skim at the top. Um, online, purely online. So, you know, I'll, I'll be saying in the next five years that we'll probably be rolling out. I'm hoping I'm wrong. However, I don't think I will be. So <laughs> if I'm still alive in five years, I'll come back to this video and see how I'm going. Hopefully I'm feeling a little bit better. Um, but what you really need to be advised of is that keep a smaller store, buy products at a very high sell-through rate, high profit margin. Don't buy stuff and don't list stuff for the sake of it. Like Case in point, I showed you on Flipwise on Friday night is that my listings for the last week, I've did seven listings and sold about, what, $600 profit. Uh, the week before, I did one listing and had $1,800 profit. I'm not saying that, hey, look, you know, look at me, I'm fantastic from that perspective. I'm saying that you don't need to be constantly listing from my perspective, um, you know, to basically generate sales, right? So I am promoting my Skylanders at 15%. I am selling a lot of Skylanders and I do it. I find personally that I'm more successful when I'm intrinsically selling opposed to extrinsically selling, um, where I'm actually enjoying selling products opposed to just purely selling products for the money, right? Um, with Skylanders example, I can sell these things. Uh, and yeah, make gives me warm and fuzzies on the inside, knowing that um, someone could have been looking for this particular character since they were twelve or fifteen or five or six or seven, and I'm adding it to their collection, or they you know they've been missing it, or their their kid lost their toy and they had special needs, and they this particular character will yeah let them sleep at night and stuff along those lines. So there's all these different scenarios that people have reached out to me personally and told me about what you know that product does for them. So. Like I said, I find myself to be more successful from that perspective. But please, please, please consider your reselling business at all points, all times. Do not get tied down by one reselling platform. Don't blame this platform. They are there to make profit only, right? So they're not here for your welfare. I'm here for your welfare. I actually care about you. <laughs> I, I don't particularly, I don't want you to fail, but I care about your mental health perspective, right? So like, by all means, you know, please reach out if you are struggling. I can push you across to services if you need them. But I am going to go lay down now because I'm rambling and I have no idea what planet I'm on. But thank you again for watching. Uh, and if you like this kind of content, uh, it's so erratic. It's out there. Um, please consider liking and subscribing and please let your comments down below as to what you think. Um, what are perfect size stories for you, right? So by all means, don't take a gospel as to what I'm talking about, but just really, really, really reconsider your story.